guys, this is Christy Falk from Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. This video is one of a few of my videos showing how to make Stampin' Up! ornate garden cards. If you don't want to miss any of them, make sure to subscribe to my Create with Christy YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below in the bottom right corner of the video. And when you do that, make sure you click on that notification bell. When you click on that, it means that you'll be notified whenever I upload a video from YouTube. I have another card with this beautiful suite of products and you can see it by clicking the link above in the top right corner or by clicking the link to it in the description below. The video also shows the products in the Ornate Garden Suite up and close. So if you haven't seen the des beautiful designer paper and the, everything up close, you'll want to make sure you check that video out. If you're needing a thank you card for a friend, then today's card is for you. It features the Ornate Style Bundle and the Ornate Thanks Stamp Set from the suite, along with the Ornate Garden Specialty Designer Series Paper, Gilded Gems, and the Ornate Garden Ribbon Combo Pack. I'll be doing some heat embossing too. That's one of my favorite techniques. It happens to be a very popular technique among stampers. If you haven't done it before, you won't believe how easy it is. So make sure you watch the video so you can learn how to do it. It's amazing how quick and easy it is. Okay, you ready to stamp with me? Let's get started. Okay, the first thing that you need for this card is the Ornate Style Bundle. It comes with the Ornate Style Stamp Set and the Ornate Layers dies. Aren't these dies gorgeous in that stamp set? I just love the flowers in it. Such a fun bundle and I've been using it a lot. So you're gonna see some cards. Like I said, if you subscribe, you'll get to see all the videos I've made with cards with this. And the die that we'll be using will be this one. I'm also using the Ornate Thanks stamp set. Such a good stamp set. Nowadays, everybody's helping each other out, which is one good thing that's come out of all this. And I'm sure you've got some thank you cards you'd like to send people to encourage them. So this is a good set to have. Then I have found out that the stitched rectangle dies, let me get hold of them here, work great with the um, Ornate Layers uh, dies. And the one I'm going to be using is the smallest one right here. Okay. And then I'm using the Gilded Gems. These are so pretty. I'm going to leave them on the white backing so you can see them better. Hopefully the lighting is doing them justice. They are faceted like diamonds, but they are so sparkly and pretty. So I'll be using those. You're going to need your heat tool. This is something you need for embossing. You do not want to use a hair dryer because that doesn't get hot enough and it'll just blow your embossing powder all over the place. You will also need some gold embossed powder. And this is what it comes in a little jar like this. But I keep it in a container. You're also going to need your embossing buddy. You'll see why in a minute. This thing is wonderful for heat embossing. You're going to need adhesive, and I'm using snail here. And then with the ink pads, you're going to need the Versamark ink pad, the Early Espresso ink pad, and the Old Olive ink pad. You're going to need some Stampin' Dimensionals. Yes, usually this thing is full, but I'm, I use every bit. How many of you do that? You don't want to waste any of these. So I'm going to use all the cut pieces here. Cut these pieces off to use those. You also need, with your cardstock, you need a old olive piece of cardstock five and a half by eight and a half, a piece of terracotta tile at five and a quarter by four. You'll need an early espresso piece that is two and a half by one and an eighth inches. A whisper white piece that's five and a quarter by four inches. Another whisper white piece that's two and three quarter by one and a half inches. A gold foil sheets piece that is three and three quarter by two and a quarter inches. Then Ornate Garden Special Designer Series paper, you're going to need a five and a quarter by one and a half inch piece. And you can use any design you want in the pack. That's just the one that I picked out. And then you need a seven inch piece of the old olive ribbon that's in the Ornate Garden Ribbon Combo Pack. And last but not least, you're also going to need a um, terracotta tile mark, Stampin' Right marker. You can find these in the 2019 to 2021 in color Stampin' Right markers. And you might want to grab a little extra thing, a brush. This will help you when you uh, do your embossing. It doesn't have to be this big, it can be a little brush too. This is one that I use a lot. 
Okay, so I'll take a few minutes, go get all your stuff together, pause this video, and then go get all your supplies. And you can substitute with whatever you have on hand, change the colors up, the designer series paper, whatever you need to do, and come back and we'll make this card together. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the card. Go ahead and grab your old olive piece. This is the five and a half by eight and a half piece. Fold it in half. I always make sure that the corners meet. Grab my bone folder. My bone folder is optional. You can also use your finger. This is just what I use to get that nice crisp, crisp crease, but you can also just take it with your thumb and push it down. So there's my card base. Now we're gonna do some heat embossing right off the bat. I'm gonna grab my Stampin' Pierce mat and a piece of grid paper because I'm going to be stamping off of the card stock some. So I want to make sure I have something to protect my work surface. So you're going to want to get your um, five and a quarter by four inch piece of terracotta tile. Take your embossing buddy and go ahead and hold on to the top. We're going to put a piece of that designer series paper here at the top. So we're going to go ahead and do this. What this does, it takes any moisture and static out of your off your card stock. That way, when you put the uh, emboss powder on, it's not gonna stick where you don't want it to. It's just gonna stick on the ink. And the ink you use for um, embossing is a Versamark. I'm gonna grab the big piece here, big stamp, that is. Love this floral image, it's so pretty. And whenever I ink up a big stamp, I turn it upside down like I'm doing now and put the um, pad on top of it. That way I can tell if I've got it inked up completely. Now, when I did this, the first thing that I stamped was the bottom center here. So I'm just gonna put this right here. And I am using my Stampin' Pierce mat because what I find it stamps a lot better with these bigger stamp sets. It support stamps, it supports it a lot better. That way the center of it is gonna get stamped. So there we go, hopefully you can see that, but it's stamped really good. Go ahead and ink this up again. I'm gonna put a little bit right over here. Let me move this over because I don't want to get any ink on my pierce mat. And let's stamp that about right there. Hold it down for a few seconds while you're putting pressure down. And now we're going to put another little one over here. And then we'll be ready to do some heat embossing. I don't know if you notice, I always keep this upside down because it's better to have the ink going that direction. It keeps this nice and moist. That's why I keep having it upside down our uh, Stampin' Right pads, or classic Stampin' pads, you don't need to do that because it keeps it upside down for you. I'll show you that when I open these up here in a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we're done with the big flower for now. Now we're gonna do some heat embossing. Now I have found you do not wanna do your heat embossing with heat tool with this thing underneath it because it starts to get shiny and starts to melt. So I'm gonna put that over here to the side till I need it again later. Grab my gold emboss powder. The only reason this is empty is because I just bought a new one. I'd use up on my other gold. So we'll go ahead and open this up. Oops, I still even got this on there. There we go, get that out of the way. And since I have it in the jar, I'm just gonna pour it on here. The reason I keep a spoon in there is because when I'm done here, I'm just gonna leave it in the container. I'm not gonna put it back in this little jar. So just use a little bit. And kind of move it around and then I'll add more if I need to. It looks like I got it pretty good. And see how some collected here? I'm going to take my finger here and kind of do that. And I'll take up most of it. Thankfully it's just the outer part. I'm wondering if I did this backwards and that was where I had my thumb. <laughs> Let me, this is why you want that brush. I'm just going to take that off because that's definitely static. That's not ink and brush that off because you don't want to have any gold embossing there. Much better. Okay, so see how all that is inked up. That Versamark stays wet, so all of the gold embossed powder sticks to it. And now having this nice little container, I'm just gonna put that in there. I'm gonna leave that in there. I'm not gonna worry about putting it back in the jar. I can come back to it the next time I wanna make another card with it. Okay, now we're gonna bring in the heat tool. Now this, you wanna let it run for a little bit and get hot. You do need to be really careful because this gets very hot. If I remember right, it's been a long time since I've had this with the instructions. I think this gets up to around 600 degrees. So that feels pretty good. A lot of times if you're doing like the whole thing gold embossing, I would use tweezers to hold onto it, but since there's nothing up here, I know my fingers aren't gonna get burned. So I'm gonna start right over here. I'm gonna raise this up, hopefully you can see it. 
And I'm gonna leave it in this one section. You don't wanna keep going around like this because it's gonna take forever for it to get hot. But I don't know if you notice, see how shiny that is getting here on the, that corner? See if you see the difference? That This corner here is nice and shiny because the uh, powder is melting. So you just keep doing that. Once it gets shiny, then you move on to the next section and just keep moving slowly. As soon as you see it shiny, move, because you don't want to do it for too long because then it starts to soak into the cardstock and won't be shiny anymore. So I'll continue to do this till it's all done. Okay, hope you can see how shiny that is. Isn't that pretty? Let me look at it so I can... Yep, that looks like I got it all. You always want to make sure all that powder is um, melted because it'll come off later if you don't. But this is looks pretty just like it is, but I wanted these flowers to pop a little more. So that's where the terracotta tile marker comes in. And I'm going to use the brush tip. And I'm only going to color the flowers. I'm not going to color the leaves. So this is terracotta tile paper with our cardstock with terracotta tile ink. And see how that just darkens up those flowers? And you don't have to worry about um, coloring on the embossed part because it's nice and slick and it resists the ink. So just go ahead and scribble over that each petal and you'll get done a lot quicker. You just keep going to all of the flowers are colored in. Okay, looks like I got them all colored in. You've noticed in the speed up, sped up version, I went ahead and grabbed my uh, grid paper because I forgot how close I was to the edge here and I didn't want to get anything on my work surface. So didn't that just make those flowers pop? I love that with that shiny gold. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, now we're gonna bring in the designer series paper piece that you've got. You wanna pick this edge that you like the best to be along the top because we're gonna put a piece of ribbon here along the bottom. I think I'm going to go that way. Grab my adhesive. Oops, there we go. Didn't want to move there for a second. And I'll put that right along the top. I'm going to turn this upside down because I can see the um, edges better because I want to make sure that I have the edges of the cardstock line up with the edge of the designer series paper. So there we go with that. Then I'm going to bring in my seven inch piece of ribbon. This is that old olive ribbon. Put a snail on each end. Then you're just going to wrap it along the bottom of that designer series paper like so. You can have it go right up against it, but I'm having it overlap just a little bit. Not much because I want most of that designer series paper to show up. Make it so it's straight. That looks pretty good. Now we'll go ahead and put this on the card. And whenever I have ribbon wrapped around like that, you want to make, I always make sure that I put some adhesive right here on the ribbon too. That way it doesn't start popping up off my card. Bring the card base back in and just stick that right in the middle. Okay. Now we're going to bring in some die cutting. Grab your gold foil piece. That one is the, uh, three and three quarter by two and a quarter and your small whisper white piece is two and three quarter by one and a half. You are going to die cut that small rectangle die out of this one and the frame out of this one. Now I will be doing some stamping on here but it's going to be two different stamps. So a lot of times when you do that it's easier to die cut it first because I might bring put the thanks too far away from the for all you do and it might be too wide for the um, to, for my image. So go ahead and die cut these in your die cutting machine and come back to finish the card. Hold on just a second. I forgot to tell you a little tip. When I do these frames, it is actually easier if you if it if it's possible and it should be since these are small to have them go through your die cutting machine die cutting machine vertically. If you do it this way, there's something about having these long ends going in this way that sometimes that center doesn't get um, die cut very well. So I have found it's a lot easier to do it this way. And sometimes with the foil, it depends on the pressure of your die cutting machine. With cardstock, I haven't had a problem. With the foil, sometimes I do, not all the time. So do your regular sandwich, but then take like a piece of uh, paper, just regular paper uh, width or uh, weight, fold it in half and put it on top of your sandwich and roll it through your uh, 
a die cutting machine and it does it does it every time if you do it that way like i said cardstock i haven't needed to do that but i have had to do that with the foil a few times just a little tip so be back in just a minute okay now i'm ready to show you how it looks when, after it's die cut there's your little frame for your thanks put my trash in here and then this one, I want to show you how easy it is to get all those little pieces out. A lot of them actually came out already, looks like. But I'm going to pop that out. You can take your finger, fingers and just kind of flick them. So I'm just taking my thumb and kind of doing some flicking. And see how most of them are just flying out, having no problem whatsoever. Now sometimes the littler circles have a little harder time coming out. Looks like it's more this size. So I'm going to bring in my take your pick tool. Actually, I'm going to do it with my... Um, brush. Take this off, put my little brush attachment on. Now I can put the die back on and use a little mat, but I found that sometimes with these, all you have to do is just gently use your brush and they come out super easy. Look at that. Let me angle it to me. Oh, I see maybe two that didn't come out. So just take your piercer. See how easy that was? So don't worry about thinking, oh, those ornate dies are always so hard to get everything out. As you can see, this one is super easy. Get all my scraps out of here so we can get the rest of the card done. So now those are ready to go. Now we do want to stamp this. I shouldn't say ready to go. Go ahead and uh, grab your early espresso piece too, because we'll be using that here in a minute. This is that two and a half by one and an eighth inch. I'm going to bring in my pierce mat again. I just find it's I just do this with all my stamps. These, now these do happen to be photopolymer that I'm getting ready to use. The Ornate Thanks is photopolymer, as you see. What you're gonna do is grab your thanks. That's the other reason it's okay to die cut this before stamping, because you're gonna be able to see what you're doing. So I'm stamping this with the old olive, or inking it with the old olive. And I'm gonna line it up here on the top, like so, hold it down for a few seconds, and there you go. The Stampin' Pierce Mat, is really needed for the photopolymer because there is, as you can see, there's no cushioning on here. There is cushioning on the uh, rubber ones, but on this one, there isn't at all. And this helps give you the support you need to get a nice crisp, crisp image. So now I'm gonna bring my early espresso in. And remember when I was saying with the Versamark, you wanna store these upside down? These you don't need to, because the way it's designed, the ink pads are already upside down, as you can see, because I'm flipping it over. I love that. Now you're gonna grab the four all you do or whatever stamp you want to fit in this. And I'm gonna put that right under here. Hold it down and there we go. Isn't that neat? I really like the, having the two different fonts. It's very popular right now and I love the look of it. Okay, done with the stamping. So we'll get that out of the way. Get some snail on here. Ah, there we go. Not pushing down hard enough or something. Now this is a different size, I know, because I did a one and an eighth. No, this way, I'm sorry, one and an eighth. But that made it so this was just an eighth of an inch wider and taller. So I just wanted a nice little border around that. Looks like I got a little cockeyed. Let me move that down a little bit. That's better. So we've got that ready to go. Let's go ahead and put this on here. Now, one thing I want to tell you, I did use the smallest rectangle. If you want to use the next size, it works too, but it, uh, it'll just cover up a little bit of the frame. But this one I wanted to be a little smaller. I wanted to show the whole frame. But the white was just a teeny bit smaller and I wanted to have a little more of a color to it, so that's why I added the brown. Isn't that pretty? It looks like a nice little picture frame. It's so cool. Now I'm gonna bring in my dimensionals. And while it's still on the paper backing here, I'm going to cut, because these are all attached, the borders are. So I'm just going to do a few of these here. It's a lot easier to cut them while they're still on the paper backing. You don't get all that the gooey stuff on the back of your um, scissors. Since these are a little smaller, I'm still going to put one in each corner like I always do. But I'm going to put one in the center too so it doesn't collapse on me when it's on the card. So there we go there. And it looks, when it was upside down, it looked like I had, yep, I did miss a couple. There's a little one there, came right out. They just didn't want to leave. There we go, now it's ready. Now, I want to show you a trick I learned from somebody else. I wish I'd come up, 
uh, with this on my own. But if you take your paper piercer, I've actually seen a lot of demonstrators do this. I just hadn't had forgotten all about it till recently. You stick your paper piercer in here just a little bit at an angle and lift and kind of bring it up like a scoop, like you're scooping it up, not just straight up and down because then this will just come out of your paper and just keep doing that with all of them. It does take a little practice. The first time I did it, I had a little trouble getting it to work. But then when you, when you get the idea of scoop, scooping it up, it works so much better. All these little pieces are together on your paper piercer and they're not all over your house. So I'm doing that all the time now. Okay, now I'm gonna put this on here. Now I'm not gonna center it over that ribbon. It's gonna be, gonna be more centered on the card, but I still want the top of it to be over the ribbon. There we go. So we've got that ready to go. Now I could just stop, could have stopped right there, but I wanted to use these gilded gems like crazy. So, and I'm gonna show you how pretty they are. So I love how they're three different sizes. I'm gonna grab a big one here and put one right there. Now with this rule of thumb, when you put on little embellishments, now this is gonna be a medium sized one. When you put on embellishments, you wanna use an odd number. It's just more appealing to the eye that way. So I'm gonna put two real close together here. Let's put a small one down here. Now I could stop there, but I really wanna have some over here. So I'm gonna put, let's put a medium sized one over here and another small one right next to it. There, that looks good. So there's my bling on the card. Isn't that pretty? Now, if you've wa been watching any of my videos, I've been uh, decorating the insides of my cards. I didn't there for a long time. I definitely did whenever the card stock was too dark to write on, but I've gotten to where I do it with all my cards because I just think it makes it look a lot extra special. More extra special, there we go. <laughs> that didn't, wasn't very good English right there. Bring in my stamp and pierce mat again in my uh, grid paper. Get your last piece, Whisper White. This is the five and a quarter by four and then grab your big flower image again. Now this one has some first mark on it, so I'm gonna grab my chamois and get it cleaned up. So you wanna clean up your stamp. I find it's easier when they're big like this to just pick up the chamois and get all that cleaned up. Now I'm gonna grab my early espresso. You don't have to ink up the whole thing. I'm kinda of inking up most of it though, so because I want to make sure I'm not going to, I'm only going to use the top part, but I don't want to want to stamp it and have a white area. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stamp this about right here. Hold it down for a few seconds, like I said earlier, and get that neat image. Isn't that neat? It just looks good with just the brown. I'm not even going to color that in. Now, if you want to color it in, you go right ahead. But I thought that looked fine without coloring. Then I'm grabbing the um, You Made My Day stamp. And since I did this in Early Espresso, I'm gonna do th these words with the green. So all of these greetings are from that Ornate Thanks st stamp set. So I love having all these different words in it so I can even have greetings on the inside of my card. So there we go. So it's gonna say, thanks for all you do, you made my day. So we'll go ahead, get this glued, and we will be done with this card. Put it right there in the inside. Oop, I'm gonna move those ink pads back. I have been known, and some of you are probably laughing right now, they've seen one of my old videos. I opened up my card and it went right in the ink pad. I mean, I was there at the end of the video and oh, awful. <laughs> so here's my card all done. Hope you liked it. If you had fun, and I hope you did too, I had a lot of fun. Um, if you did have fun and wanna stamp with me again, please make sure to subscribe to my channel below. Make sure to click on the bell, like I just said earlier in the video. That way YouTube will notify you every time I upload a video. I don't make videos for all my creations, so if you want to see more, you'll want to follow me on my blog, which is www.createwithchristy.com, my Facebook page, Pinterest, and Instagram. If you live in the United States and don't have a Stampin' Up! demo, I would love to become yours. If you need a current catalog mailed to you, click on the contact me link below in the description, and I'll get back with you right away. You can order from me by clicking on the online store link below too, and uh, that's in the video description. And you don't wanna miss out on my $50 shopping spree, and that's on me. You will uh, make sure you click on the Dolly Rewards link below to find out how you can get that $50 shopping spree. Well, I will see you in the next video. Bye.